Welcome all to language skills video number 22 and this is part 2 of punctuation and today we are going to talk about the use of semicolons and colons. We'll start with the uses of semicolons. The first use of uh, semicolon is to combine two independent clauses. You remember that we combine two independent clauses using a comma with one of the fanboys. And this is another way to combine two independent clauses when we have a relationship between the first independent clause and the second independent clause. The second independent clause adds to the information given in the first independent clause. And we, when we put a semicolon in between them, uh, we do not capitalize the first letter in the second independent clause. Look at the sentence. Three candidates have applied for the position. All of them have good experience in the field. So the second independent clause adds information about the experience that those candidates have about this field. And if you notice the word all, the beginning of uh, the second independent clause is not capitalized. The second use of semicolons is a continuation of the first use. We also combine two independent clauses, but we also add a conjunctive adverb or a transitional expression. And this uh, conjunctive adverb or transitional expression gives the relationship between the two independent clauses. So what should we do? We put the first independent clause, then we put a semicolon, then we put the conjunctive adverb or transitional expression and a comma, and then we add the second independent clause. Look at the examples. The speech was long and repetitious. Consequently, people in the audience began moving in their seats and whispering among themselves. So what is the relationship between the first and the second one? The first one is the cause of the second one because it was long and repetitious. So people started moving in their seats and whispered among themselves. The second example, she exerted great efforts. However, her lack of technology didn't put her as a winner. So there is a sort of contrast here. There's a sort of shift here. The first part or the first independent clause is a positive one. She exerted great efforts. And then we have the word however, which is giving a shift. Her lack of technology didn't put her as a winner. So this is a negative um, clause or meaning here. The third one, the exam was hard. Nevertheless, she got a good score. It's also a contrast or a shift. If you look at the difference between however and nevertheless, both are giving contrast or both are giving a shift in the meaning. Usually, or in most cases, however, is followed by the negative one and nevertheless is uh, followed by the positive one. Fourth example, he didn't apply for a medical school as his parents wished. Instead, he applied for computer engineering. Okay, what is the relationship between the first independent clause and the second independent clause? It's a sort of alternative. Uh, we have here some um, words of uh, conjunctive adverbs and some of transitional expressions. Conjunctive adverbs, accordingly, however, moreover, besides, indeed, nevertheless, consequently, instead, otherwise, furthermore, meanwhile, and therefore. Transitional expressions as a result, for instance, on the contrary, for example, in fact, that is. So if we have any of this group or that group, we just put um, the first independent clause, then a semicolon, then uh, this word, the conjunctive adverb or the transitional expression, and then we add a comma, and then we start the second independent clause, again, not capitalized.
We all know about the rule of using a comma with one of the fanboys in order to combine two independent clauses. In some rare cases, we may use a semicolon before the fanboys. Why? If the first independent clause has a lot of commas in itself. Stephen Foster wrote many songs, including Oh Susanna, Camp Town Races, and Beautiful Dreamer but he is best remembered for my old Kentucky home. If you look at the first independent clause here, so we have so many commas here. Uh, oh, Susanna, and then a comma, that's the name of a song, and then another name of the song, Camp Town Races, and then comma, and then and, Beautiful Dreamer. So we need to differentiate between the use of commas here um, in the listing in the first independent clause and the comma before the uh, coordinating conjunction. So we may use this as a rare case, but it's totally correct. So you may put it as a semicolon before, but... We all know that when we have a list, we put commas between the items of the list until we have the last item, so we put comma, and, or, comma, or. Here we have the, the items on the list in themselves, they have commas. So between uh, the items, we put semicolon. What does this mean? Look at the example. On our trip to South America, we visited Santiago, Chile, Bogota, Colombia, and Lima, Peru. We visited Santiago, and this is a city in Chile. So between Santiago and Chile, we put a comma. And then Bogota, Colombia, that's a city in Colombia. And then Lima, Peru, that's a city in Peru. So I need to make a separation between the cities and countries. Okay, so I need to say that Santiago is a city in Chile. And then Bogota, that's a totally a different city in a totally different country. And Lima, that's a totally different city in a totally different country. So uh, between the city and its country, I put a comma. But between those two elements, the city and the country, and the city and the country, the second one, I put semicolons. Look at the second example. Winners in the competition were Alina Murphy, first place, Jeff Bates, second place, and Eduardo Davis, uh, third place. So Alina Murphy, and then I put her place. Okay, between her name and the place, I put a comma. Then Jeff Bates, he got the second place. Between his name and the place, I put a comma. So if we... Uh, talk about Alina Murphy and her place, and then we put Jeff Bates and his place between those two items. I put a semicolon. Now we'll start talking about the uses of columns. The first use of columns, use a column before a list of items, especially after expressions like as follows or as the following. Look at the example, Central America includes seven countries, uh, please, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, and Panama. Okay, um, if you look at this sentence, uh, Central America includes seven countries. Can we stop here? Can we end the sentence here? Is it a complete sentence? Yes, it is. So you're starting a list after a complete sentence. Then you put a colon in the middle. But look at the example, the other example down. It's we collected blankets, canned goods, and clothing. Here, I cannot put column between the word collected and blankets. Why? Because blankets, canned goods, and clothing are all direct objects of the verb collected. If you wanted to know the trick about it, stop at the word before the listing. 
can we stop? Is it a complete sentence? As we said in the first example, Central America includes seven countries. That's a complete meaningful sentence, and I can stop here. But if I said we collected, can we stop here? No, you cannot. So you will not add um, a column because what is coming is a sort of direct objects to the verb uh, that is before the listing. The second use of column, we use a column um, between independent clauses when the second clause explains or restates the idea of the first um, clause. It's not an additional information, it's a sort of explanation, it's a sort of rephrasing or restating the idea. Those hanging lamps are the most popular kind. They are inexpensive, available in many colors, and easy to install. So why do you think we have to put a column here? Because simply, um, they are inexpensive, available in many colors, and easy to install. This is all explanation why they are the most popular kind. Uh, we'll have two examples to see the difference between using a semicolon and a colon to combine two independent clauses. The first example, I don't blame Leslie for her anger yesterday. It was her plan and she should have received credit for it. Okay, the second um, independent clause here that starts with it was her plan. This is a sort of explanations why I don't blame uh, her for her anger. So if you say I don't blame her uh, for her anger, the first question you would be asked why you don't blame her. The second independent clause here is the answer of this why question. Look at the second example. Tickets are available at the, post, uh, at the box office. They can be picked up one hour before the performance. Okay, is the second um, independent clause explanation of the first one? Actually, no, this is additional information. So the first, um, the first independent clause talks about the place of the tickets. And the second independent clause uh, talks about when you can buy them. One more use of columns. We use a column before a long formal statement or a quotation. In his speech, I have a dream. Martin Luther King begins with these words, and then you put a column, and then I'm happy to join with you today in what will go in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. That's a formal quotation, or that's a formal um, um, speech that was given by Martin Luther King. So before we start this for, uh, quoting this formal speech, we just put a column. We use columns also to um, express time when we talk about the hour and the minute. So it's 8 and then we put column 00, zero a.m. So it's exactly 8 o'clock in the morning. And then when we say 9.30, we put uh, between 9 and 30 with a column to say that this is the hour and these are the minutes. Sometimes when we read a book or uh, an article, uh, we find that there is a main title, a big one, and then there is a smaller one. We call it a subtitle. Between the title and the subtitle, we put a column to differentiate that this is the main one and this is not the main one. This is a subtitle. So look at this example, Ghosts and Voices, writing from Obsession. So we know that the main title of the article here is Ghosts and Voices. And then the title would be talking also about writing from Obsession. That's the subtitle. We are writing a business letter or a business email, so we uh, may start with to whom it may concern. To whom it may concern here, 
Um, maybe you're giving a recommendation, maybe you're asking about something, maybe you're inquiring um, um, information officially. So you write to whom it may concern and then you put a column. If you're writing to an editor in a magazine or a newspaper, you say, Dear Editor. If you're writing to the HR personnel in a company, you write Dear HR and you put a column. That's more formal than putting a comma. This is all about using semicolon and columns. Hope that was helpful to you in uh, tackling all questions in language skills that depend on the punctuation. Until we see each other again, um, best of luck and don't forget to send your questions and feedback on English for Fun English Skills at gmail.com. Thank you and see you.